Anyway, what a great time it is today. You know, today we're going to be talking about crosses that we, that we have to carry sometimes. And I want to talk about a few things first, but you know, we have this internet and we have our web page out there. And I've got proof, okay, it's in my hand. I've got proof that North America exists because the internet just told me it exists. Europe, it exists. Asia, South America, Africa, and Oceania. Those are the continents that we're reaching out to with our webpage. Now I've got proof here that, that 15 hits from a continent that could not be identified. So therefore, we're reaching even the outer limits <laughs> that have not been identified. But the truth is we've gotten the continents that we haven't um, hits on our, on our web page across the country, uh, they're looking at our sermons, they're looking at uh, things that we're doing, and we're reaching Europe quite a bit, North America of course is the most, but you know we're reaching places that we don't even think we're reaching. That's why it's so important that we understand that we have to use our technology of today, and sometimes that technology is a cross that we have to bear. That technology sometimes is something that we have to do. I didn't have a smartphone for a long time. You know why? I didn't want to learn how to use one. I got a phone to be used as a what? Phone. As a phone. Now I've got a computer in my pocket. I check my emails. I check how far things are. I call. I, I even talk to it. How far is it from here to there? You know, we have to use technologies in different ways. So today I'm going to talk about crosses. Crosses that we need to bear. Do you know if you don't bear a cross, it don't it don't has not very much value. You know, I went through a lot of training in the army. The courses that I remember the most and the ones that I'm the most proud of are the hard ones, the ones that I had to suffer through, the ones that I had to work my way through. The courses that I took that was just in the army we call gentleman courses, in other words, Air Force courses. <coughs> that you don't really have to do much to sit there. We don't think much of those. But you know, but we go through them. But you know, I was thinking about while sitting in here, I went through a NBC, Nuclear Biological Chemical course. And I thought I was going to go learn about this stuff, but it was really a cool course. And we learned to blow up things. We learned to build walls of fire, we learned to blow up trees and bring down things. We even learned how to make a simulated nuclear device. And it's not a nuclear bomb, it was just to make a, the pop up, you know, the, the mushroom cloud for training so that when you're training, you could do this little mushroom cloud and it looks like a nuclear attack. And, and it was just blowing up things, which was fun. <coughs> you know, but yet, I don't talk much about it. I had a little thing, a ribbon that I wore in my uniform I never wore because it was just fun. And sometimes fun is, is nice to do, but you know, if you really want to grow, you really need to dig in. You really need to study. You really need to carry that cross. And many of us have different crosses to carry. I want you to open up the book, your Bibles, to Acts chapter 13. It's on page 1695. And we're going to talk about three verses, very simple. But I'm going to talk about these men that had to carry their unique cross. Now, I don't believe that every one of us carry the same cross. We carry different crosses. We carry different things that we have to carry so that we can do what, the, what God has called us to do. And many of us don't want to carry the cross. Now, I, want, I also want to bring back last week's sermon. Remember what last week's sermon was? It was on Psalm 23, remember? The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. You know, and I got a text. And they asked me, where was forgiveness in that? And you know what's interesting is in that ver in that chapter, there's not a single thing about sin. It has nothing about you being forgiven or, be, or, or finding forgiveness. It has to do with you already are, and Jesus Christ is already your shepherd. So therefore, once he is your shepherd, guess what's happened to your sin? It's already been washed away. 
But you know, sometimes carrying our crosses, again, it's not about sin. It's not about you carrying the cross of sin because the cross of sin has already been nailed to the cross that Jesus hung on. That was His cross He had to carry. That's not the cross that we carry. Well, we carry the crosses that God puts in our lives that we have to deal with. With a lot of husbands, it's the grocery store. See, he thought I went the other way, didn't I? With the wives, most likely it's the husband. Sometimes it's our children we've got to carry. Sometimes it's the church. Sometimes it's people that you work with. I don't know what cross you have to carry, so we're going to talk about a few of those. But you know, before we get started, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you. You are an awesome and mighty God. Lord, do anoint these words, Lord. Let it be your words and not mine. If it's your words, let it fall on good soil, Lord. If it's mine, let it be fall to the side, Lord, because we want you and you alone, Lord, that we may come closer to you. We thank you, we praise you. You are an awesome and mighty God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. If you could open up your Bibles to Acts 13, verse 1. Now, in the church that was in Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, Barnabas one, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manan, who had been brought up in Herod the Tetra, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, now separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work of which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. Now, what are these three verses? What are these verses talking about? So let's talk about some of these men that were here. This is right here is the beginning of the church. This is the group of first missionaries, the first people that go out and start preaching the gospel into this land. They're in Antioch, and in Antioch where they first called Christians, by the way, if you study the word, they were actually being called Christians was actually a derogatory comment. And the, it wasn't the church that named us Christians. It wasn't the Bible that called us Christians. It was pagans that called us Christians. So we received the name that was given to us as a ridicule. Not as an uplifting, but you see what well, we've taken it and we've made it something because what Jesus did on the cross. See, the devil was working and not even understanding that he was glorifying Christ by trying to make fun of those Christians. And it's happening today. People around the world are being persecuted because of their Christian belief. You can't say many things in churches. Today, in most, in most schools in New York, you can pray to Omar and Muhammad and anybody else, not a word is said, but if you pray in the name of Jesus, you're in trouble, especially if you're faculty, especially if you're a teacher. So the attacks are coming. See, these are crosses that we have to bear. These are crosses that we need to talk about. So let's talk about the first cross, Mananean. Now, here's a guy, Mananean, that, you know, if you ask most people, they've never heard of. He's not mentioned anywhere else in the Bible, but yet he's one of the first missionaries that went out. Who was this guy? Well, we just read it. You see, back in the day, the kings, the princes, would find someone to be the prince's friend. And they would select someone that would be their friend. Manane was selected by Harold. Harold was, grew up with him, grew up in the palace. They became friends. And we know about Harold, right? We know what he did. And Manaeus, so therefore, what cross did he have to carry? The, the cross of wrong friends. Because what would happen? Manaeus was called to be a Christian, but yet he grew up in the palace. He grew up, what? This friend of his, this prince that became king. And he's saying, no, I'm sorry. I cannot follow this king of the land. i got to follow this Jesus that was crucified. Man, this is the same man that judged Jesus. The same man that was sat there and just went in front of the, the king. Man, the man said, no, I'm going to follow Jesus. And see, this is a cross of friendship that he had to carry. He had to break friendship with a very powerful man. The, one, of the, one of the most powerful men in the land of Judea at the time. 
He had to break that friendship. Why? Because he had to choose. He had to choose either Jesus or his friend. And sometimes that's a cross that we must carry. Are we so involved with friendship that we will turn our back on Jesus because we don't want to offend our friends? We want to walk, but yet we don't want to lose this friendship? Maybe you have to break that friendship. Maybe that influence is destroying your walk with Christ. Where are you today with your friends? I have many friends. I've got a friend of mine, Andy. He was the best man in my wedding. He came to visit us. <clears throat> yeah, he did not talk to me anymore. Why? Because I became a pastor. I cannot hang out with the friends unless I have an influence on that friendship. Now, if that friend is taking me down the roads of destruction, because of that friend, I'm doing drugs, I'm drinking alcohol, I'm doing things that I'm not supposed to do. What do you need to do? You need to break that friendship. Because now you're no longer the influence in their life. They are an influence in your life. So there's the cross of friendship. And many of us have to carry those. Some of us not to the extent. But Jesus said, well, I came to divide. I came to put brother against brother. Mother against daughter. Father against son. I come to cut to the bone. Why did he say that? Because you see, we have to choose. Either you are a Christian, a believer in Jesus Christ, or you're the friends of the world. Sometimes the biggest cross that we've got to carry is the world. Here in our service, we, we have to weigh this all the time with the music. We have to weigh it all the time. Are we? Be the Bible is very clear. Do not bring the world into the church, but take the church into the world. So when we even do our music, we've got to balance. We've got to make sure that we're not becoming too friendly of the world. Mike Hyman one day came back out of Texas to visit a church. And they opened up their service with what? Led Zeppelin. And Michael asked me, why are you doing this? Because we've got to be friends of the world. That's not what the Word of God says. You, my, me, every one of us may have to break friendship with the world. Many times we have friends that are taking us down the wrong road. Let's go to Bible study. Nah, I'm going to go ride my bike instead. Or the, or the greatest, the greatest one not happened here in this church is golf, baseball, sports. Guarantee you that in most churches across the United States, if they have a softball game, a baseball game, or a football game, or a basketball game on a Sunday morning, where get, where do you think the children of the church is going to be? It's going to be at the game. Why do you think the devil has a game on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock? So that the kids don't go to church. Because you see, hearing the word of God is the only thing that's going to keep our children from going down the road of destruction. If they don't hear the word of God, then they have a choice. They are hearing the word of the devil. They're hearing what Satan wants in and out, day in and day out. Look at our curriculums in our schools today. Look what happens in our parks. The devil's out there trying to take our children, and most churches are gladly surrendering their children to the God of sports or the God of music. When are you going to carry that cross? What cross do you have to carry? So here's a man that grew up with all privileges, gave it all up to become a missionary, to go out at the beginning. you got to think about this now. This is the beginning of the church. We didn't have 3,000 congregations out there. They didn't have thousands of books of, of theology written. These people were going out purely inspired by the Spirit of God. But yet, they took the courage and went. You think King Harold was happy with Manan when he turned him down? Can you imagine 
the President of the United States invited you to a party on a Sunday morning and you said, no, I need to be in church. How many of us would do that? What if a movie star, your favorite movie star, your favorite musician, what cross are you willing to bear for friendship? Barnabas. How many of you heard of Barnabas? Now we've heard of Barnabas because he's one of the missionaries that went with who? With Paul, with Saul. But Barnabas says that he couldn't speak. I'm not a good speaker. I'm not all of this. Here's a man we've heard of many times in verse 1. Now, what cross did he bear? He bared the cross of financial liberty. You see, when the church was hurt, he sat there. He says, well, I can't speak. I don't have the ability to teach, but I do have the financial ability to help the church. So therefore, he gave from his finances, that was a cross that he had to carry because that was the blessing that he had. Now, he held it, he held on to it. It probably wasn't that easy. It was a cross that he had to decide. What can I do for the kingdom? <laughs> Barnabas happened to have money. Barnabas happened to be able to survive and do the things for the church. And so therefore, it came a financial crisis in the church. Barnabas sold everything he had and gave it to the work of the church. He wasn't doing much for the church. He wasn't going anywhere. But yet, you know what? He says, this I can do. So we have an man that gave up what? Friendship. Barnabas gave up what? Money. Money. Finances. I don't know which, five, which ones we have to carry. These are examples of men in the Bible that had to carry the cross. And when they carried that cross, they grew. And they became powerful men of God. I have, I've never known in my life one man or woman in the church that was faithful, loving, devoted, so concerned and so dedicated to God's word that doesn't give their tithes. You know, people can say don't talk about tithes that much. You know, there's a story here I've read. I thought it was a really good one. And he calls it the French fry. And the story goes, the father takes his boy to McDonald's. And he orders some French fries and food. Father pays for it, takes it out. You know how you get your, your trays of your, your McDonald's and your French fries? And the father reaches over and grabs one french fry from the son's little basket. Son got all upset. Dad, that's fine! Father says, why are you so upset? I only took one. He says, but it's fine. But I gave it to you. Why are you so upset that I took one french fry? Is it so hard for you to give back one french fry from all of these fries that I'm giving you? But isn't that what we do with our finances? God gives us all these finances. God gives us all these blessings. But yet we are stingy enough not to want to give back anything back to God. You know, we can spend money on vacations and on cars and on trucks quicker than we can to pay for a mission trip or pay for a missionary. We're more willing to do things first with what we need then we give our tithes. What does the Bible says? Have you robbed man? Have you has man robbed God? Where have we robbed you in? You robbed us in your what? Tithes. Your tithes and offering. So what? So what cross do you have to carry? What is that cross that's keeping you from opening up what God has put on your heart? Is it friendship, or is it your money? The Bible says where your money is is where your heart is guarantee you that your back, your wallet speaks volumes of who you are. One of the Baldwin brothers, I can't remember his first name, not Eric, not Alex, the other one. Who? Stephen, Stephen Baldwin. 
he spoke at a church in North Carolina, and, uh, and people keep always asking him, why don't you fix Hollywood? Why don't you, you're a Christian, you're in Hollywood, why don't you fix these movies that are coming out? He reached back in his pocket and says, you know why? Because you are spending this, your wallet, on those movies. Christians and churches are going to see those R-rated movies, are going to see those violent movies, are going to pay for them to do it. You've got people out here that's talking about gun control that makes a million dollars on violent movies. But yet, we've talked about we want change. It's because we're willing to give the devil our money quicker than we are to give it to the church or give it to God or give it to his ministry. I would rather spend $15 at a movie somewhere than put $15 in an in a, in a offering plate. So what cross must you carry? I'm not talking about being legalistic here. I'm talking about being obedient to God. The Bible says if you, own, if you do this, I'll open up the heavens. You know what's funny is, this is the only place that you can test God in. Nowhere in the Bible does it say to test God. But the Bible says, test me in this. See if I don't open up the windows of heaven and pour the blessings upon your life. I've seen blessings come financially. That's amazing. But you know, we have to be faithful and we have to carry that cross. What cross do we have to carry? What about Saul? We thought Saul, we know about Saul, right? What about, what did he have to do? Anybody know about Saul? He became later Paul on the road to Damascus. What was Paul doing? Persecuting the Christians. He, was, he wasn't just persecuting Christians. He was doing a political move so that he could move politically up the line. He wanted to be the Pharisees of Pharisees. He wanted to be the man. And so therefore, he, kept, he found out, if I could persecute Christians, I could be elevated in this political arena and become somebody. And become somebody, maybe even the high priest one day. He wanted to be the, the Pharisees of Pharisees. He was going on his road. You know what? He was there when the first martyr was killed. When Stephen was killed, the robes were thrown at his feet. Paul witnessed the first martyr for Christian dome, and he sanctioned it. Why? Because he wanted politically correct. He wanted to go into the political arena and become somebody. And many times now today, people are doing these things. So therefore, he had to forget those things. He had to change. He went from becoming one of the most powerful Pharisees of the land to a missionary getting stoned, dying, beaten. And being thrown in prison. What cross did he carry? You see, he could have been somebody. Was that boxing thing? I could have been somebody. Yeah. No, Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester Stallone. Rocky. Rocky. I could have been someone. No there you go. <laughs> So you see, he had to carry that cross. He had to decide, I'm going to do away with that. I'm going to go do something else. And many times, that's a cross that we have to bear. There's a time that you're going to have to change your way of life. You know, it reminds me of the greatest one of forgiveness of this, of this cross was a gentleman that used to come to my store. Him and his wife, he'd come in and buy stuff. He'd bring out wads of $100 bills and buy jewelry. He finally came to Christ and was led to Christ and got baptized and, you know, and then one day he came in and he says, uh, Jim, in my office, he goes, Jim, could you pray for me? I says, what's wrong? He says, this was a Saturday, and then he goes, on Monday, I'm going to be sentenced, I'm going to go to jail. And I says, why? He says, well, Jim, you know that I used to carry, I used to, I used to be a drug dealer. I said, yes, I know that. And, he said, and I said, and you're going to jail? I thought you gave up. He said, no, 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 I gave all that up. But Jim, it's really hard. Because she says, I have never worked a day in my life. I've been running drugs since I was 12 years old. I always had wads of $100 bills in my wallet. Now I'm working, and I'm getting paid minimum wage. Now I'm getting this money. I, don't have the, I can't buy my wife these 
things. I can't buy her the cars, the jewelry. You remember the money I spent in your store buying jewelry? I can't do those. I said, well, okay, but why are you still going to jail? You go back to do something? He said, no. I read in the Bible that I must confess my sins. And I said, yeah, you confess your sins when you accept them. He said, no, 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 no. It said right here, confess my sins to man. So I went to the police instinct and, and confessed all my crimes. The armed robbery that I committed, the things that I'd done, all the stuff that he had done. And the police go, you serious? He goes, yeah. They arrested him, they charged him, and he, had found, he was found guilty. That Monday, and actually when he left the office, I gave him a case of Bibles, and I said, well, bud, I guess, I guess you got a prison ministry. I don't know what to say for you. And about three days later, on a Wednesday, I think it was, he came by, I said, I thought you could go to jail. He says, no, the judge couldn't believe that I had confessed my sins, and he says, he's a believer, and he says, time served. Boom, you're set free. You see, he was willing to forget, forget everything. He was going, you know what was interesting is, here's a man now that is truly forgiven. In other words, no one can bring an accusation. Oh, I know you. you you're the one that brought it. Yes, I did. But see, I've been forgiven twice now. I've been forgiven by the name, name a guy named Jesus, and I've also been forgiven by a blessing by a judge that said, time served. But what cross did he have to carry? What forgiving things that you have to forgive? Forget your past sin. Sometimes we carry this sin with us so often. Sometimes you've got to be as a cross that you, you're carrying for no reason. Forget it. But it's hard sometimes. I dealt with people in the army. I've counseled Vietnam vets. I've counseled people that have done terrible things in war. How can Jesus forgive me what I've done? Is there not enough power in the blood of Jesus to forgive every sin? See, sometimes the devil keeps putting that on you. That's a, that's a cross that you need to learn to release back to Jesus. What did Paul have to carry? You know what he had to carry. He gave up a future. He gave up a place to be among places. He gave up riches. End up in jail. End up being stoned to death. Because that was the cross that he had to carry. Now, here's a guy, my favorite, Simeon, Niger. I love this guy. You know, anybody ever heard of Niger? Yeah. Well, Simeon, Niger, was the guy, let's go back in history a little bit. You remember when Jesus was, <clears throat> was arrested? And then he went to this kangaroo court and he was found guilty and he had to carry his cross. You've seen all the movies and carrying the cross up the road in Jerusalem. And all of a sudden he can't do it. A Roman grabs Niger or Simeon and grabs him and says, you carry his cross because he's too weak. He can't carry it no more. And Simon said, no, 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 no. I'm an innocent man. <clears throat> if, if my friends see me carrying this cross, they're going to think I'm guilty of something. No, you carry it. And Simeon picks up the cross of Jesus and carries it to Calvary. The reason I say this guy, he's a, he's a black guy from northern Africa being forced into carrying the cross of Jesus, the cross of Calvary, without choice, without an election. He was picked out of the crowd and he was forced to carry that cross all the way to Calvary. The reason this guy's my hero is he was not a volunteer, but yet he saw Jesus. He must have seen the face of his, of later on, his Savior. He could have seen the pain in Jesus' face. He knew what it's like to carry that old rugged cross up Calvary Hill. But yet he was not beaten. He was not tortured. Then he must have watched Jesus get his nails through his feet, nails through his hands. He must have saw Jesus speak. He must have heard him tell the, the thief of the cross, for you will be in paradise. He must have heard Jesus tell, Father, why have you forsaken me? He must have stood there and watched this man that he had no idea who he was. 
who he was forced to carry that cross and watch him die. And he must have watched the, the earth change, the darkness, the earthquakes. And a few days later, he becomes a true follower of Christ. One that now is going to be one of the first missionaries to go out into the world. A man that was forced to carry a cross of Jesus. That didn't even want nothing to do. He was there because he saw the people. He wasn't there because he had an axe to grind. He was there because he wanted to see what was going on. And because he was called out, and I know because he had to carry that cross, he had the opportunity to touch this man named Jesus. And his life was transformed because of a cross he had to carry. What cross do we carry today? Are you carrying a cross of personal reliability? Are you carrying a cross of self-loathing? Or being sorry for yourself. Can you imagine if somebody picked you out of the crowd and made you carry that cross? Can you imagine when he said, I can't do this? Because he was worried about his what? Reputation. But yet he becomes one of the first missionaries. You see, we all have crosses to carry. And all of our crosses are not the same. Some of us bear the cross of having to listen to a preacher. Some of us have a cross to carry to listen to music we don't like. Or listen to a baby cry in the middle of the night. Now, I know there's not a parent in here that just loves to change a baby's diaper. But you know, that's a cross that you carry willingly. How many parents in here have paid for your children's college education? You did it willingly, so you carried that cross of financial, financiability without a problem. What about when friends talk bad about you? Because now you're no longer hanging out with them. You're no longer doing the drugs. You're no longer smoking and drinking and partying. What cross do you have to carry today? I want you to listen to this.
there a cross you're carrying? Or there's a crown in heaven for those that are carrying that cross today? Is there anyone here that has a cross they need to bear? Is there anyone here that needs to recommit their lives? Because maybe they trip and fall. Maybe they're not going the path that they should go. Maybe a cross they need to pick up and carry today. Is there anyone here that needs to rededicate their lives? You're ready, and when you're ready. Remember, we all carry a cross. We all have a time. The altar is open for those that have a... Sometimes a rededication. Sometimes coming back and rededicating your life to Christ. Maybe you come to Christ at one time. Maybe you've walked the old dirty streets of Jerusalem. Maybe you've dragged that cross because you were in Niger. You were forced to. Because you were forced to go to church. But now, you're willing to rededicate <coughs> your life to Christ. So church, if you would pray for Amanda, that she wants to rededicate her life and come back to walk a life, that she may one day I don't know what cross she has to bear today for coming up. I don't know if it's friendship. I don't know if it's pure pressure. But I am glad that she's willing to bear that cross and come and rededicate her life to Christ. Would you pray with me? Put your hands forward if you don't mind. Amanda, do you recommit your life to Christ? You recommit to walk according to his words. Men of your confession of faith. The Bible says, for if you confess, he is faithful to forgive. From this moment back, no matter what you've done, even since you were baptized until this moment, the Bible says, for you are forgiven by the precious blood that was shed on Calvary, and that the devil cannot bring an accusation against you. For if he does, he has to conquer the blood-stained cross, which he cannot conquer. Because Jesus took the victory. You are redeemed by the name of Jesus Christ. You've been justified by the cross. Do not let the devil trick you again. Don't let the devil and friends guide you down paths that you should not walk. So Lord, we thank you for her dedication. We thank you that she is wanting to come back to a path of righteousness. Lord, strengthen her. Put a hedge of protection around her. Guard her and protect her. Help her, Lord. For times ahead, we know as we dedicate our lives to devil attacks. So Lord, put that protection around her and strengthen her. That she may become a mighty woman of Christ. We thank you and we praise you. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.